Okay, so I thought I would talk about how to maintain your mental health by making sure you can still go to the gym. Because, as we all know, the gym, most underutilized uh, antidepressant and anti-anxiety, and, I mean, it keeps keeps me sane. So, what happens when you suffer an injury and can't go lift? Uh oh. So, here's something you can do to actually speed the healing when you have an injury, particularly in the lower in the lower region of your body, the lower extremities, your knees, your ankles, um, etc. Okay. So here's what you do. I'll give you what to do, and then I will tell you. Those of you that want to cut out the video can, and then I will explain the science of it. It's really cool. But okay. So here's what you do. You need two buckets that will accommodate your feet that preferably are fairly deep. Now, I would issue some kind of warning about lifting buckets with heavy wa with lots of water in them, but I'm talking to my bros here who of course can lift a bucket, you know, with water in it. Not an issue. They deadlift all the time. So, you want two buckets that can accommodate your feet and like I said, you could do dish pans, but it's more effective if if the buckets actually can be filled with water such to about the knee level. You will fill the first one with hot water as hot as you can stand, but not to the point of burning. The second is filled with cold water, as cold as you can stand. If you live in Phoenix, you will be adding ice to the cold water that comes out of your tap because it is not cold. It is cold, right? It will be lukewarm and you must add plenty of ice. So you want the variation, you want the contrast to be strong between the two. You start with hot in bro ease. You're going to do six sets of two reps. Always start with hot, always finish with cold. The hot is three minutes long. So put your feet immersed in the hot water for three minutes, followed by 30 seconds of cold. Back to the hot. Repeat this up to six times and then finish on cold. Do this up to three or four times a day for a good week and you will see results. You will be amazed at how fast you heal. Very simple, utilizing stuff around your home and it's pretty freaking awesome and that's the way naturopathic medicine is in general. So thanks for tuning in. Those of you that you don't really want to know the physiology, maybe see ya. Adio. Okay, so the physiology of this that's Totally awesome, guys. Thanks for staying with me. Um, your circulatory system is a closed system. What happens is you have a pump. That would be your heart. Oh, wait, probably in this video. It's over here, but <laughs> backwards on the video. Um, your heart and the piping all closed, right? You have miles and miles and miles of blood vessels. You only have five to six liters of blood, the average human being. So what happens? Well, at any given point in time, you the end, end uh, tissue area where the, the gas exchange and blood flow to the tissue actually happens, 90% of those capillary beds are shut down because you would have no pressure in your whole circulatory system if everything were just open. So contrary to popular belief, much of the time no blood is flowing to a lot of parts of your body. You divert it based on what's happening and what you need. Now there's certain parts of your body that always get blood. This part up here, your brain, 20% of blood flow automatically goes to your head, your brain. And if it doesn't get its ultimate need for blood, guess what? You pass out. <laughs> Because it levels everything. You're suddenly on your side. Guess what? All the blood will flow and you don't have gravity to work against. So, yeah, you're, you have a mechanism to pass out without not enough blood flow to the brain. Also, your kidneys get like 25% of blood flow. And then, so you have some organs that kind of demand a massive amounts of blood flow. Now the rest, everybody else, you know, gets the blood. So what happens? You have an acute injury in the foot. Let's say you, I don't know, you stepped on it funny. You twisted your ankle, etc and it's swelling up. That would be the inflammation. Initial inflammation is a good thing, contrary to all the willy-nilly fad 
crap out there about anti-inflammatory stuff. I mean, yes, you don't want inflammation to last for a long time. Chronic inflammation is a problem, but initial inflammation you actually need to heal. What happens when there's inflammation? The blood vessels in that area, the capillary beds get leaky, and good stuff that's in the blood leaks out into the tissues. White blood cells, they're going to chew up the detritus, the crap that's around, make sure that we can do some cleaning here, make sure that we don't have some kind of bacterial thing going on, you know, all sorts of stuff. Good stuff. Inflammation, swelling, good. But Houston, we have a problem because now we have all of this blood that's kind of pooling now in our ankle. And it's not, uh, the system is not able to keep up. Now, you do have a lymph system that, you know, works in conjunction with your circulatory system to kind of pull the extra stuff and put it back into the blood. In the process, it filters it. But that's kind of a slow system, slower even than your circulatory system in terms of the venous return to the heart. So what happens? Blood's pooling there. It's not able to kind of catch up. You get some swelling. Right. Problem. So what did I tell you at the top of this broadcast? I told you that your blood vessels, um, right, not enough blood, and you have arteries that flow away from the heart. They actually have muscles, smooth muscle lining them, and whereby, because of this smooth muscle, they can contract and expand, contract and expand. This is good, and some of the ones that are close to the heart, they have to do that because they have to withstand Freaking high pressures coming right out of the heart. It's like, dude, wow, you really need to pump that hard? Heart? Yes. So they can do this, but then even at the, you know, further down in the arteries, further down the system, you actually have some ability to still dilate and contract. And this is a good thing. Because what happens when you have the blood pooling in your ankle is you need vasoconstriction and vasodilation oh and guess what it's correlated with heat or can be because your skin the organ that helps thermoregulate most of the time well what does it do when you're too hot the blood vessels near the skin they dilate <laughs> and when it's too cold the blood oh, let's run inside let's get close to the to the warm spots right you keep your core warm because there's lots of important stuff here but, oh well, we can use a fi lose a finger or a toe. <laughs> Who needs that? <laughs> that was a joke, guys. Anyways, um, so what happens, right? Vasoconstrict, vasodilate, in the presence of heat and cold. Oh, wait a minute, Jen. You were just telling me about contrast hydro. Right. We are manipulating, like a narcissist, the circulatory system. We are causing it to pump in and out of the ankle. Blood is healing. You bring the blood to an area, you take it away from an area, you are bringing all the nutrients, all the good stuff you need, and you're taking away all the crap. All the detritus, all the stuff that needs cleaning out, and let's excrete it through the lungs or dump it into the GI. You know, get rid of that crap. That's what you're doing. Huh. That sounds remarkably a lot like healing. Exactly. So there you have it. That's what's happening. This treatment is contraindicated in people who cannot feel temperatures in their feet, such as a diabetic with a neuropathy in their feet. Probably shouldn't do this uh, because they could potentially burn themselves. Largely that's the issue. But, and I will say this at the end of the video because it's a little tip for my bros. This whole thing works on your circulatory system. And it's kind of like cardio. I'm not saying you can skip cardio day, but what I am saying is that this is kind of like cardio in that you're going to get these wonderful benefits from improving the circulation. So even if you don't have an injury, uh, you're going to improve your circulation in your feet. Let's say you perpetually have cold feet. Huh. This is a way to actually address that. Trust me. I am one with cold feet who knows that this actually works especially if you do it frequently. So the frequency of doing this treatment to speed healing, I would say three or four times a day, you know, for upwards of, well, it's not going to hurt to keep doing it. Not at all. So, but it's kind of annoying to have to lift and hoist the buckets over to the area. Of course, if you're a bro, you're getting some lifting in additionally as you do your bucket hydrotherapy contrast hydro treatment. 
So there you have it. I'm improving your guns while you're doing con con contrast hydro. So you can thank me later. But let me know how it goes in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Adio.